Hi, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. This is part three of the Fujifilm FCR it's XG1 X-ray image scanner teardown. And the part we're looking at today is the PMT assembly. Now, it came with a very special acrylic light capturing device here, which has what seems like yeah, eight cutouts all folded back together to hit the photo multiplier tube. Now the PCB down here at the bottom sits with a power supply and has a coaxial output. So it will be interesting to see what kind of high voltage power supply it has on its own and what kind of signal it actually outputs. So let's check out this very, very specific and very, very nice piece of equipment. Okay, I will try not to make this entire video be all about this piece of acrylic plastic. So we have the main board down here. We have a large, what seems to be something like a 32 pin connector or maybe 40. And then we have this little coaxial connector here for the output signal. It is labeled up here PMT, connector one and two. To demonstrate how the light travels through this acrylic piece, I uh, use a, a green laser pen and we can actually see the beam going, bouncing back and forth down through the acrylic. So I'm just gonna follow the edge here, just as it was mounted inside the image scanner. And as we can see, if I follow the flat surface, that it actually hits on multiply points. So hitting down on a straight angle here actually does not follow the straight way through the acrylic piece here. But as you can see, it really bends all around these very nice curves. It looks completely awesome. I really hope that this is captured well on camera because this looks so incredible in real life. And we can see how when it hits here, it switches to the next row. And if we just follow back real quick, you can see how it switches over here to the left. And what I find funny is that you can see if I direct the laser as to give us a straight point all the way through. That's actually some 30 degrees off how it was mounted inside the scanner. So that also tells us that it's actually not that important that the light from this uh, laser is uh, captured directly. It is simply the light glimpse that you calibrate to the yeah, released ion energy in the blue light that uh, really matters, that it does not need a direct hit. So let me just try to get all this off because it, there only seems to be some kind of silicon putting on top of the tube here. We have the shielding that's doing the magnetic shielding of the PMT, so not to get interference. And other than that, yeah, not that much. So let me get all this taken apart. from the PCB here. That's quite quite nice design, really, that you have a, a socket sitting here and you have your amplifier section, input plug, output of the signal. You have the capacitance and resistor splitter for the whole voltage supply to all the dynodes inside the photomultiplier tube. And you should really check out my other video on photomultiplier tubes if you would like to explore the inner workings of these tubes that can multiply one single photon up to billions of... We can see over here we have a what seems to be a small integrated high voltage power supply and we can actually see the outline here for a bigger unit. So it would be interesting to get to um, look into the data sheets and see what we have to power this with and it seems that we are getting a ready signal out once we get to that. Now let's put that aside while we look at the whole thing here it was actually mounted on isolated plastic discs. So for some reason, the thing here was isolated from the power supply. And that can only be to avoid static electricity from this part as that this is plastic and you do not want any static discharges going into your power supply and signal gathering section here. But it's rather interesting that this tube here sits a, in a complete rubber gasket. I'm not really sure if that even can come off. And it, 
it sits here with this silicone. Yeah, you can call that the optic. Um, call it, this is there's a word for this. Uh, just like you have uh, thermal paste, you have something like optic paste. But this just seems like a silicone material that ensures you have the surface of this aligned completely with the tube window. So I'm not really sure if I cut this open, if I can even... Oh, yeah, okay, it seems I can pull this off the tube, just like some kind of rubber sock. Let's just call it that. There is really no application for this whole setup here for what I'm going to use a PMT for. So let's just try to cut this bottom holder here off and see if we can actually pull. Ah, this is actually quite clever. I have not seen this before. Wow, it's, it's one of those uh, see-through. It's actually clear glass. Wow. All the ones I have had before, you could not look in through and see the dynode setup. So I think I have to use a little, a bit more force to get this out so we can not do that on camera. I have to take it away from the work table. So be right back. A very nice Hamatsu R1848. 07 PMT. It's a 10 stage photomultiplier tube and uh, we can just barely see the bottom of the construction here and that is a box and grid construction. We can see that from that curved box we have here at the end and probably hard to see on video but we can see the back of the previous stage uh, just below here. Yeah. A little hard to see with all the shine back into the mirror finish here. But it does seem that it is secured or at least glued on with some very heavy glue to the glass surface here that we have another glass disc. Certainly sounds like glass. For a first test, I am using the power supply from the whole Fuji film scanner itself, using some adapters from the different teardowns of uh, base station amplifiers I have done. So only took two to three of them to find a plug corresponding to the small one here up to, yeah, I had to cut one open anyway, but I at least did not want to ruin the original cable. Now first we're going to measure these measure points plus and minus 12 volt to the ground here and see if we have the voltages we expect. The tube itself uh, has been wrapped in aluminum foil and I have my yeah, crystal sitting underneath here. So we should be able to pick up some kind of uh, radiation from yeah, space or just something at least. And we'll use a single trigger mode on the scope for that. But let's first check the voltages. Now the fan in the power supply is a little noisy so I hope I can yeah, speak in over that. So let's first check the plus 12 volt, we have plus 12 volt, and we have minus 12 volt. Well, that's a great start. So let's just give it a go at the high voltage negative supply sitting at the back here. Minus 0.3 volt. Okay, so the high voltage supply is not active. So I guess I have to experiment with activating one of the input signals to the board and perhaps we can get it to run. Browsing through the manual I discovered that there was a description of this board having a hardware OK and a software OK for the high voltage to run. So it has some internal logic for the hardware OK but the CPU card actually has this input pin HV software high. And this is what actually needs to be pulled to plus 5 volt in order to activate the negative high voltage supply. As we can see here, it's running at minus 510 volts. Now this is a tad low for particle detection as I'm set up for here, but it is sufficient for X-ray image scanning. So I have my scope set up here to uh, detect the peaks from the output amplifier. So let's just go into single shot mode again. 
and I have it set up uh, pr pretty high at uh, a trigger level at 70 volt DC. I'm not quite sure about the scaling here. It seems a little high for for this circuit, but uh, never mind because I'm not really having any scale or being able to tell what kind of particle I'm detecting anyway. So at least I can see that for the last that's some good five hours I have actually detected 888 particles if we look up at the counter sitting up there and I would also like to show that when I say it's the high energy particles that we have detected so far I can try to turn down the sensitivity or turn up the sensitivity of the input trigger up here and we can see now we start to count a serious amount of uh, particles. As a last test, I have a couple of thoriated tungsten welding rods. And uh, as we can see, the counter up here, yeah, just counting some, a few, a few per second. And if we near these uh, tungsten rods, which actually only have a pretty weak alpha radiation, we can see that the counter actually starts going much faster. And if I remove it again, we can see it slows down again. Let's near it again. So it is clear that we have a crystal here that is picking up radiation or particles and emits a yeah, light flash into the tube. Or if this direct um, or if this radiation directly could impose the plates inside the photomultiplier tube to give a signal. I'm actually um, not quite sure about that since I have no metal shielding around it to shield it from radiation. But nonetheless we do see a change when nearing a radioactive object to the PMT. I hope you enjoyed this video, the teardown of the complete machine and especially the reverse engineering of the photomultiplier tube, high voltage power supply and signal amplifier. So until next time, see ya.